by the mushers and the town can change how people affect morale. This is great this is a great video showing how the dog and mushers have different strategies. Oh my god. Nathan Schroeder has very good wheel dogs that help pull his sled, and they also give the team good morale for the entire race, even when the team is hurt or if he is hurt. Um, Lance Mackey is talking about hands and dogs, dogs, including how he keeps such good control with dogs, and his legs, even when it should have even be on track, and, and how he keeps his morale high and good. Yeah, even though yeah, last yeah, year he didn't think he was going to make it very far, he still made it pretty far. Uh, and, you know, We've been dealing with this for a long time, and it doesn't seem to be any better. Part of my problem is that, uh, you know, with, with uh, the rain odds, I don't have much for circulation. Well, of course, they get cold. I put hand warmers in my gloves. It dries your fingers out, then they start splitting. And that's where that went right now. As you can see, mushing is very hard on your hands. That's not much fun already. I'm less than 40 below. In fact, I wouldn't be out here for this morning, though. We're seeing uh, the typical carpus or uh, uh, wrist injury. That uh, As you can see, the, the vets explain every day what they see with the, the mushroom uh, dogs how the trail is and, how, and the how the doctors on. defer and it seems like probably from the, the, teams are gonna follow the checkups on the dogs and the mushrooms. The dogs are more important than the mushrooms, according to George Stober. Uh, Brits so explain how they can treat there, dogs so and what they see every day around and how it helps the mushers feel better when they get through their certain checkpoint and keep their morale up, which is very hard in this kind of a race. Go through, but you know, right now it's not too hot, so I think they're just going to rest up. They've been running pretty hard right now, and they're going to rest for a few hours and then take off. The great conditions, and 
Let's speak and tell why they vaccinate their dogs and how they stop. This helps their dogs and the mushrooms. When the mushrooms enter the town after all the checkpoints and security, every dog is vaccinated. Even if the dogs are heavily vaccinated before the race. You can see there are many different viruses that dogs can carry. The biggest challenge is having to have them fly their dogs into Anchorage to get their vaccines. Um, that's very costly, um, so this is a very fortunate um, day to be able to do vaccines in their place of health. Now here's Mitch talking about his team for this year's Indian Round. This, the 16 that I'll be running are obviously they're out of the core group that I was training, but you know I started training with 20 or so, and uh, I have 17 to pick from. I'm, it came out just right. But interestingly, there's a lot of younger dogs, um, and they're tougher than anything I've ever seen. They're more well conditioned. They held up to more mileage and more trials and tribulations than any team I've ever had. So I have. 100% confidence in the toughness and the athleticism of these guys. Um, I've retired a few really great leaders, and so while about half my dogs are what I think are great, are, are great leaders, we have to see who steps up. But you know, all my leaders are three-year-olds, so that's that's the fun part. A lot of new, a lot of new guys in that position. Right, they kind of yeah, soak yeah. it up. Yeah, they learn more from each other than they will ever teach them. Today, we'll be learning the everyday life of a sled dog in our dinner race. We'll be learning how they, how they just live in their, in their little, how should I call it, these little bins that they live in. Just like this video is sick in and it's on just I think we didn't be like a hero there.
as you can see, there is a lot of dogs that live here. There's up to, I think the maximum is 60. And, and no, no, never mind. 15. I think 50 here. 50 dogs or more. Hey, try to count that. And that's it. Helps that it would help identify the children driver. One of my dogs was killed in, uh, pretty much on the spot. And uh, a couple others I gave first aid to the best I could and loaded in my sled. And it kind of felt like a uh, triage ambulance. The driver never stopped, he did not return. I reported the incident to the village police and the Bangalore and Turner asked the troopers to come to investigate. I'll be continuing on the race. I did not request medical assistance for myself because I was not hurt in any way. Um, the 11 dogs I have here appear um, un um, unimpacted by the event, and at this point I'm going to continue on this trail. It did not seem like an accident. It seemed like an act of bravado in playing chicken. The river is a mile wide. The packed trail is 40 feet wide. I had lights on, reflectors on my harnesses, sled bag, two lights on my person. Um, it really felt like an intentional attempt to scare me. There are many wonderful people in these communities, and there's also some very serious social issues in rural communities around Alaska that involve substance abuse and um, I feel sorry for um, the communities that have to suffer through that. It is beyond um, comprehension to me that this was not related to substance abuse, that no one in their right mind would do what this person did. such alcohol or drugs and um, <clears throat> I couldn't help but um, think of um, John Baker and his wife Katz um, attempt and many of the other wonderful people in rural Alaska's attempt to um, help provide role models that um, can put an end to the tragedy that goes along with substance abuse. turns me on about the whole thing. The race itself each year, you know, is an, it's, it's a challenge and it's a goal. But the fun part for me is training and picking and um, creating a dog team that can excel doing this. So that is, uh, the, the race is an opportunity for me to have that goal here. here. So what's with this CV kid, huh? <laughs> What is with the CV kid? 
I don't Jeff? know. I just remember when I used to grab his head in a headlock and give him a noogie. <laughs> and uh, I don't think I'll do that anymore. <laughs> anyway, congratulations to him. This one, I think, a you know, I was... I was wanting to say a couple of those, uh, he was ready to take advantage of uh, a race uh, that went his way, but it sure appeared that he had uh, a plan that he executed great, and I'll be anxious to see the, um, the footage because it's all in the dogs. It's real easy to imagine what a, uh, and recognize what a bummer that night was on the trail, but the fact is, it could have been so, so much worse. I mean, I, I couldn't really... Um, it's probably the closest call I've had with a drunk driver. It could have killed me and uh, the whole team. Um, so, you know, at the Denali Doubles uh, race, a race I put on last month, uh, I did a tribute to um, a little girl that had lost her life um, to a drunk driver. Let it be a, um, another lesson.